Hey there everybody, I am starting my next uh, multiplayer game series and it's going to be Tribes Ascend, I'm going to do all the classes. Uh, for this first episode we're going to do a bit of a tutorial in case you're not sure what Tribes is or you're new to Tribes or you suck at Tribes, who knows. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an average to above average player so I won't give you probably the best advice but I'll tell you what I know from the perspective of someone who played like uh, some Quake and Counter-Strike and stuff. Uh, if you're not interested in this you can go ahead and skip to the second episode. Because uh, this is all tutorial stuff. Uh, so here's the main menu. And so when you first... Uh, I created a new account just to show you what it's like to have be a completely new player. Uh, afraid to go and get into tribes and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to try and help you out. So the first thing you probably want to do is do training. And so they tell you how to ski. I'll, t I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, they have video tutorials. Some people will talk about this stuff as well. Target practice. Uh, they have a ski challenge, perfect your skiing. I actually have not tried this, but what, uh, probably... My skiing is average, so don't expect that much from me. And uh, you can also roam maps if you want to see a map without having people shooting at you. So we're actually going to hop right into target practice, so I can actually show you what the hell uh, this game is all about. Make the soldier. So, welcome to Tribes. Uh, so you spawn by default as the soldier class, who has uh, a thumper weapon and an assault rifle. And so the basics of skiing is, um, well actually I'm going to go ahead and just tell you a, an optimal keyboard layout that I actually found. Uh, this may actually help your game a little bit if you're uh, more into, if you're like come from like traditional shooters a lot of the time. Not so much Quake, I know Quake had an uh, interesting one by default. So what I have by default is that my jump and jetpack key is spacebar, so it's basically my up key, like a traditional FPS. Then I have left shift as uh, toggling ski. So when I press it once, it basically goes into frictionless mode where I can't turn or anything like that and I'm, I'm basically just skiing as you would normally. I don't think this is detrimental to the game at all. It's, it's honestly, it comes down to preference. It's whatever you want. Uh, the rest of this is all basically the same. I can't really suggest you change any of this stuff. My zoom is on right button, mostly because I, play, I do play a lot of Sentinel, uh, which is the sniper class of this game. Uh, so uh, another thing that impo that's important is uh, Changing the spot target key to I think it's left out by default, but do have it as something that's uh, easily accessible. On video, I have motion blur and video uh, yeah, and uh, frame rate smoothing disabled. Uh, that may help you, may not. Who knows? Uh, I'm not too much into blurs. So I had that on by default, and I just turned it off. Obviously, you want to disable mouse smoothing probably if you're not used to that. You can also change the FOV to up to 120. Kind of nice. Uh, High res did a really good job with uh, some of these options here. Uh, I reduce the weapon size. It's something else that may be interesting for you and also simulate projectiles. Now what this does is uh, It will show you on server side what the because this is a very projectile based uh, shooting game. So this will Stop emulating it on your client side and actually show you what the server sees and so why you're missing and all that kind of stuff I have it off. Uh, it could be a, it's a matter of personal preference and uh, there's, there's not much else here. You have a ton of options They did a really good job in giving you whatever you want so uh, the basics of skiing is that uh, I press shift and then you can see these little bars on the side. I'm basically, the, the whole gimmick with this game is that, uh, with the tribes at least, is you, you go into this frictionless mode. I'm not pressing anything, I'm just kind of moving wherever I want. And so I have a little bit of control over where I'm going, not that much. I'm right now going to the right, and you may not notice this, but I actually am going to the right. Uh, but this by itself is obviously not a very good game mechanic. And so you want to be evading enemy projectiles at all times. And so that's where the jetpack comes in. So uh, running on my own, it, it's about, I go about 31 units of, uh, units of whatever but per second. But however, if I like lightly tap on the, the jetpack a little bit, now I go to 72. This is actually the, the fastest movement speed you can get on the ground itself uh, without having hills help you out or self damage help you out or anything like that. So the idea of the, the Tribes going fast is you go up a you jetpack up a hill, you ski down it, and so now my speed is up to 100. I'm ski because uh, going up a hill normally will slow you down, so that's what you want to be doing. So I'm skiing up, and I'm gonna just keep jetpacking in the air. I'm gonna use this hill to gain some momentum, and look at that. So I'm not particularly very skilled at skiing. I will I will tell you that right now. It's but you know, so you can basically just practice with going around the map. Uh, and you have to kind of, uh, you got to work the angles of these hills. Like, I want to go a little bit that way, so I'm going to actually go down this hill. So you see how that kind of changed my trajectory kind of a thing. You get used to it. 
after a while. And if you really want to go fast, you see I'm going 165, you start doing self damage. And I'm going to reach the edge of the map now, so I'm going to try and switch directions by using this rock here. I failed completely and utterly at it, but that's okay. Um, so that's the basics of skiing. Um, now, for as for weapons, uh, so the soldier is actually a fairly good loadout. It's one of the ones you will have unlocked by default. And uh, what he gets is he gets a Sumper Explosive Weapon, which is actually probably good as your primary weapon if you choose to play this class. You just hit two right away and you, you switch to the Thumper immediately. And uh, this is basically, it's sort of, it's an explosive weapon, uh, not quite as good as a spin fuser, but uh, it has a bit of drop and a bit of fall off. Like you'll notice how it goes down and explodes. Uh, not too bad. You also get this assault rifle. Um, now you may think that looks that looks really overpowered, but it has it has projectiles. So aiming for people is actually when they're moving like this. You get a little bit of practice in. See, I'm I'm fucking terrible. And you know, with the, with the leg and stuff, see, I'm not even hitting most of these shots anymore. I mean, it, it's I, I suppose it's great when you're standing still. It, it is a great weapon. It really is. Uh, I'm just I don't play a lot with it. So it's great for finishing off people too. That's what I normally use it for. Uh, so that's it for the soldier class. And so if we actually go and look at the classes, you can see that there's, um, by default, your, your account will require you to unlock a bunch of classes. And uh, the Pathfinder is basically the going fast class. It's the flight capping. Uh, a lot of skill required for this. I honestly, I would not touch this um, uh, if you're just starting in the game. You start with the spin fusers so you get a bit, a bit of a taste of how uh, the spin fusers work. And you also get like a shotgun to go with it. And you also get grenades with every class. This one is a nitron grenade, which uh, causes flag drops. But you can, you can honestly see what most of the, uh, mo whoops, sorry. Um, you can see what most of the weapons are if you just kind of hover over it when you're modifying the class. Uh, and so that that's Pathfinder for you. Um, I'm not good at Pathfinder. Sentinel is basically your sniper class. Um, it, it's if you're good at sniping in other games, the skills will carry over very well. I assure you. Infiltrator is your stealth class. You get to be invisible. You get to basically be a pain in the ass to people. Loads of fun. Uh, soldier is what you're seeing, watching me play. Very all-around balanced class. I, honestly, one of my favorites at this point. Uh, the Raider, however, is, uh, is, is probably the best dueling class in this game. It's very good at absorbing damage and dealing it out at, from any range kind of thing. Uh, and Technician is uh, usually for newer players. It lets you kind of uh, repair generators and things like that if that's what you want to be doing. Uh, Juggernaut is a long-range bombardment class. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, well, actually, let me go switch to him to show you guys. So he has this thing called a fusion motor, and amazing amounts of splash damage. If you can, the thing is though, you'll notice how I hit the whenever I hit the ground, uh, it didn't go right away. However, if I if I give it a bit of uh, time to come back down, so like it will travel as far up as you want and head straight back down. And it will blow up immediately upon hitting the ground. But what this is mainly for is for taking out heavy targets and things like that. It's dodgeable at close range. It's more meant to be spammed. So you notice how it's like now exploding kind of faster. Uh, honestly, um, if you're just starting this game, I would honestly, this would be the first class I would go for. You also get a bit of a taste of his spin fuser. Uh, so, you know, it's not like you're, this is a this is a good spin fuser. This is like a, a high damage one, not like the Pathfinders one. So you, you get a bit of a taste of um, how to, uh, you have to basically lead with some of these targets. Maybe try and get like an air shot, uh, which I can't really do. Uh, sorry, it's called a blue plate, uh, not an air shot. So you get, as I said, you get a bit of a taste uh, of a little bit of everything with this class. Um, the one disadvantage though is you've noticed how the Pathfinder and Soldier have direct uh, combat capabilities. Uh, this one doesn't, obviously. You just get a grenade to go with it, and it's like a mediocre grenade sort of thing. Uh, so it's not terribly great. Uh, then there's a Doombringer, which is meant to be kind of like a stand-on-the-flag kind of class. This is probably my least favorite class in the game, because I just I, I just don't get into it at all. Um, and Brute, which is basically an all-around, also a really newbie-friendly uh, class, which actually I can show you. Um, so... It, when you're in training mode and only in training mode, you actually get to select classes you don't have access to. So even though it says locked, press it anyways. Oh, pick a loadout. I am now playing Brute, even though I didn't have the class unlocked. This is a fabulous idea if you actually want to try a new class and you are kind of afraid of uh, of, uh, of buyer's remorse, basically. Because things require XP to unlock. 
And the system is actually very fair. Uh, I And it's gotten, like, very... Quite good uh, as of late, and um, it, it th things require like no experience whatsoever to, to unlock. So uh, I'm gonna go more into depth of these weapons and all that kind of crap with with every class I'll be showing you. So I'm not gonna bother too much with uh, showing off like anything here. Uh, also, by the way, if you go to modify classes and you select, let's say this guy, and I'm gonna go. Oh, I want to try the Devastator, D Devastator, uh, Spin Treaser, Nova Cult, and uh, I don't know. Uh, you want to try a new pack? There's packs for these guys. Uh, like a survival pack, probably one of the best things for the Brute. I love it. Uh, and you know, you can also pick your perks. By the way, um, perks is one of those first things you should honestly go for if you're uh, new to this game. Is that Because you, what you start with is Ultra Capacitor 1 and something where it gives you 100 health every time you die if you don't kill anybody, which is basically... Uh, it helps you when you're a new player, but it's one of those things you should replace. Like for me, I'm going to get Bounty Hunter so I get more, more money as I kill, kill people. And uh, I don't know, survivalist. So when I get pick up drop uh, ammo drops, uh, I get more uh, ammunition. Uh, they unfortunately don't seem to drop that in this game, game type. Uh, but you'll you'll see plenty of that er, later on. So uh, you notice how I have both of these. Like it's pretty cool, huh? So you get to try it out. You can't keep these with you. It just it's just a tryout kind of a thing. It's it's all right. Uh, so that's pretty much it for uh, how the t how the tutorial mode works. Um, some other, some other little advanced uh, things that you're going to have to get used to. The reason why people call it such a difficult game is because people are trying to move around constantly to evade your fire. They're moving around very quickly. And so uh, you have to kind of guess where they're going to go. And, and, you know, and most of the time you'll miss probably. See, like, I'm missing. And now that was a direct hit. But uh, you get a blue plate if you hit somebody in the air. Uh, which is what people try and go for. It's one of those games where... You can try and get a lot of uh, uh, practice in. I'm trying to wait until this guy comes comes into the air so I can maybe demonstrate that. That being too shitty. Come on. Nope, I missed. There you go. See, there you go. And, and you get little awards at the top of Blue Plate Special, for example. There you go. Easiest shot. Uh, I could have possibly made it. I feel pathetic right now. Uh, whatever. So, uh, one of the other little mechanics that you're going to have to probably get used to is when you're moving, your, your shot does... Like, right now I'm going to try and hit that practice turret. Oh, I, I hit it perfectly fine. Now, what if I'm moving? What if what if I aim for it and I'm, I'm, I'm moving slightly to the side? Okay, I'm getting... I aimed right for it. Oh, no, I missed. Oh, I missed again. Look at this. I, I just can't seem to hit it. I am accurate, but the problem is that there's something called uh, movement, uh, sorry, a weapon inheritance, which basically the projectile you fire uh, inherits your speed, so you have to aim it like a little bit to the side. See, see what I did? I missed on purpose, but I hit it anyways. Whatever, I'm missing, I'm missing, so, so this is a terrible example, but I'm just trying to tell you everything. Uh, that's uh, basically what's, what with that. Now, the game types there are capture the flag game types, and... Uh, a whole a whole bunch of different uh, there's like a te like a team deathmatch game types. Uh, I recommend CTF personally. This is known to be a CTF game, uh, and that's probably your best option. Uh, so there, it's showing. It's also demonstrating. This tutorial shows you where all the the vehicles are. There's like grav cycles, which is mostly go used for going fast to a place. People don't really use this because your self speed will will be good. Base turrets. Uh, even though this one's not shooting me, will this will when it's powered up when the enemy generator is online. This will this will uh, shoot at me uh, if it's not dead. And you notice how this is actually a recent patch thing. It has a little shield there, so I can't actually hurt it with as a brute. Um, you can do some creative stuff with the juggernaut. Uh, well, here let me go switch to jugger you. So a little bit pro tip from your friend Mike: wait for it to blow up and fire both. I I, I kind of sucked at it. Oh, it 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 hit it directly, but whatever. Um, you can do that. That's a good strategy when you're playing this class. Um, also, these things are uh, give you ammo on Team Deathmatch. They are littered all over the place. All you do is you step onto it. I got all my ammo back, and I'm just completely recharged. This is a tank. It's the Beowulf. Uh, it It's a heavy artillery. Uh, if you're standing still, it's very hard to get people in the air with this. So don't be uh, so be in the air at all times. Try Well, at least try to be. Uh, a common strategy if you are playing uh, is you go in the air makes it really hard for people to hit you. And then you just try and like rain down. When they're on the ground, you try and spin fuse them. That's a good little tip if you're having trouble killing people. Uh, a lot of people will try and go for those air shots because, you know, if you, the better you get at this game, the better off you'll be. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to get really good at this game. So that's that's why, you know, this is what this is. It's the kind of game you practice and you get better at every day. 
Now one of the vehicles you don't see uh, is a Shrike, which is a flying vehicle, and it actually doesn't appear on this map, it seems. Which is odd. But it's basically a flying vehicle where... Uh, it's like aerial support. Uh, not as good for attacking as you would think, it's more for harassment. And also, you can run over people with the flag, so just be careful of that. And so this this map in particular has uh, two uh, two sides, uh, a flag over here and a flag on that end. Uh, this tutorial map, though, they're both on my team. And specifically on this map, uh, the generator is in every is in every map, and this would normally be where my generator is, but they took it out for this map. And they also give you these stations, which allow you to equip a repair gun. I just switched my spin fuser out for a repair gun. Now I can repair base assets. Whatever I want. However, that's always my second slot. Uh, I, I have only the motor gun, which is obviously not a good thing if I'm going to be in close range encounter. So it's maybe not, should not be the thing I switch out. It'll switch out your current weapon. However, if I go back to an inventory station, I can fire that. Uh, so, there's one last thing though that we do have. Is we have uh, different, if you notice in my upper right, I've been getting credits for doing things like kills. If I'm capping flags, I'll get kills for that. Things like that. If you press uh, 0, 4, and 5, you get different, uh, basically, drops to kind of help you uh, maybe break through a defense that you don't like or something like that. So something like a tactical strike, this usually costs 4,000 credits. It's, it's free in this mode. So I basically target it here. And it, that's what it does. 10,000 damage. If they, someone is caught in the splash of that, they die. Kind of nice. Uh, you can use it to clear flag stands, maybe snipe off a flag carrier, who knows. Um, the next one is Orbital Strike, which is at 10,000 uh, 10, credits, uh, and it's, uh, by the way, you have to keep the, if it's, you're, if you're targeting invalid area, the cursor goes down a bit. So, you know, since it requires time to charge, maybe what you'll do is you'll aim at the ground for a second, and then at the last moment you'll go like this so they don't really know that you're about to do an Orbital Strike. And so it gives players a little bit of warning. So whenever you see that red thing, uh, going down, maybe move the hell out of that area. Uh, I'll, if you go indoors, it's also a safe place to go, as well from orbital strikes. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, getting getting kill streaks like this also really ups your experience. That's kind of nice. Also, if you're running out of money uh, and or like the generators empowered, so your inventory stations are empowered, you can call in an inventory station. And it comes down. This will actually kill a player, so don't stand under this. It'll kill you or them. And so you go onto it, and you can do this. So, uh, normally in a game, you can't quite switch classes quite as easily as this. I'm just pressed enter now, and I just decided to go Pathfinder. You can't do this in a normal game. Uh, what you have to do is you have to actually, you have to switch, and this could be pending. So either you kill yourself, which you have a suicide key, or you go into an inventory station of any, any sort, which is, uh, what you want to be doing. Um, so that pretty much does it for the basics of this game. Uh, I, I think I haven't explained, uh, I think I've explained basically everything. I hope. Uh... So, uh, really at this point, what you have to do is you have to go and try to play the maps yourself. It is, this is a free-to-play game. It is absolutely free for you to try. There is no obligation. They don't want your credit card upon sign-up. Uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun, too. Uh, so, and if your computer was made in, like, the last, like, three, four, five years, you should be able to run this. Uh, no problem whatsoever. And they also have, I think, a lower-than-low setting if you want to do any hacks and th stuff like that. I'm sure someone has done that. So, um... Oh yes, and uh, there's actually one more thing I want to talk about after I talk about Tribes. So yeah, it's, it is uh, just Google up Tribes Ascend, Tribes Ascend .com, play Tribes Ascend or something.com and uh, they'll give you a client to download, you sign up before an account, that's it. Um, what I, what you don't have to, if you're going to play this occasionally, maybe you don't want to um, put money into this game, you don't need to. Uh, they're not, it's not, you're not obligated to, but you know, you, you I, if you're really into this game, going for the Game of the Year edition would be nice. Or, uh, at the very least, if you put a little bit of money into some Tribes Gold, uh, you get a VIP status as well, which is also really nice. It basically uh, gives you half more experience, like 50% more, which is which is really nice. Uh, I, I highly recommend that, so. Uh, but yeah, the last thing I want to talk about is actually uh, the difference between projectiles and, and hitscan, and I'm not sure if I made this point enough. So, this is hit scan. This is instantly. Like, it instantly does damage. Uh, know the difference. So, the, la the, the the server will compensate for this. There aren't a whole lot of... Like, like you don't have to, like, aim ahead or, or lead. The, ser the server knows where you're aiming uh, most of the time. Yeah. Uh, well, if you find a good ping server, it'll know where you're aiming. Uh, sometimes it's just the spread is kind of weird on things like the shotgun. 
Uh, you don't have to lead this. You see, I'm moving around and I'm not leading it at all. Uh, so that's that's something to take into account. Projectiles like this, you have to lead and you have to do all that kind of crap. It's affected by inheritance, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, something like the soldiers uh, loadout, or actually, this is I'm playing infiltrator right now. This is actually a good example of uh, infiltrator gets like an SMG. When you see the, the the tracers on the screen, it means you have to lead, which means you're doing things like this. You have to aim for for the nice motion blur, and your weapon name may not be 100% accurate. Uh, like like all, most of the weapons in this game are actually not hit scan. Uh, there's very few, and they all have fall off damage. There's a whole lot of there's a ton of fall off damage in this game, with a lot of the weapons. Uh, and to give you an example, of that I'll go and play. Uh, I could play soldier because he actually gets uh, an eagle pistol, which I'll use. The sniper also fall. Uh, the sniper uh, in this game, the sentinel, also like he gets a sniper rifle right off the bat. However, that also has fall off damage. So I'll show you that. See, like when I'm getting closer, I do more damage. Now 100 is pretty much the cap, but as I get farther away, you see it doesn't have a whole lot of range. It's good for finishing people off. You can use it for that. Uh, however, it's probably not the best idea. Um, now, if you're playing Sentinel, by the way, there is a charge-up meter, as you can see by the sides there. And so you have to charge it up to full, and so I'm now doing 500 damage, but if I'm gonna, let's say, attack this guy... Look at that, only... Uh, well, I don't think I had it fully charged, actually. Ah, uh, he's kind of moving away. Oh, I, okay, that's still not far enough away. Uh, I can also hit this guy. Okay, well, whatever. You get the gist of it, so there's not a whole lot of hit scan weapons in this game. Not even, like, your primary weapon, uh, your secondary weapon as this class, you even get, like, a projectile weapon. So it's like, you know, it's a big, it's a big game about projectile, uh, uh, prediction, basically. And, uh, you know what, and don't be, don't be afraid when you, when you join a server and you're just like, oh shit, everyone's gonna kick my ass. It, believe it or not, it's not a serious game whatsoever. It's not, like, there is a competitive scene to it. But uh, don't feel intimidated by the difficulty. New players play this all the time. Nobody ever, uh, like, you know, I, well, I don't even say nobody has ever done that in the history of this game, but, you know, um, people are actually very genuinely nice. Uh, I've only met, like, a couple of uh, dicks online, and it's just, you know, you can just ignore them because there's no voice chat in this game. You don't have to listen to someone, uh, some 13 year old, tell you uh, uh, they're better at you, they're better, better than you or something. Uh, or whatever like that. And speaking of uh, being better than you, um, this game also has one of the best, 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 uh, uh, one second, I'm gonna go to a heavier class. This, this game has one of the best things, uh, which is, is basically, um, since there's, a, since there's a lack of voice chat, you can either chat to people, so you can press T. So I just said hello, except I'm playing single player, so no one will see that. Uh, or you could use, uh, what's called the VGS system. And uh, to figure out what that does is there's the infamous, uh, what something that Tribe is really known for. If you just press uh, VGS, you say Shazbot. <laughs> and this is actually, uh, it's actually a good thing to learn this if you're just playing, dicking around in your, by yourself just uh, on a map like this. It's actually good to learn something like this. Like you just go, uh, you kind of just look at all the commands very quick. Thanks. Oh, so if I press VV3. By the way, when it's not bolded, it's to my team. If it is bolded, you notice the difference? It, it's going to everybody, so it's globally. So you can actually hear when the enemy team is going Shazbot kind of thing. So uh, using this system, you can actually uh, tell pe work as a team kind of thing. You can tell people what to do so, or like t say what you're going to do. So I'm going to say, I, as a juggernaut, I'm going to go probably kill the turret. So I'm going to go voice, self, attack, turrets. There you go. And, and you kind of get used to it. It's just... The, the the words kind of go uh, kind of fit together, and maybe maybe we're not defending our flag. Maybe I'll just go V D F, defend our flag, uh, or like maybe go take their flag V F T, or that's that's take the flag for me. Um, see, I, I don't even know what it is sometimes. Uh, oh no no that's that's not the right thing. It's actually uh, it's V T. <laughs> Whoops, uh, you go V A F. It's, it's, you tell, when you, when you go, uh, when you do the S, you're telling yourself to do it. If you're, do, if you're not having the F, I can tell other people to go. I can tell other people to go get the turrets, so that's kind of nice. So, um, so as I said, I, I, what I really think as a new player you should be doing is, uh, sticking to heavy classes. Because the thing with heavy classes is they don't have a whole lot of mobility. Uh, mobility, if you haven't noticed, my energy is going down really fast, and I'm going really slow. 
So you can't go fast. You just, you simply incapable. The mediums actually go a decent speed. They actually go fairly fast, but um, but the, the thing about playing a heavy class is you have a huge health pool. And so as a new player, you're probably not going to be very good at mobility to begin with. It is something you have to pick up. So playing a heavy class actually helps a lot uh, because you get to take a couple of hits. You don't get that Pathfinder that's really good at air shotting you with spin fusers. Uh, or sorry, blue plating you with spin fuses. I'm, I'm going to be doing this the entire time, aren't I? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, if you're used to, t if you're used to, by the way, TF2 Soldier, uh, this game you're going to love, or like Quake Rockets or something like that. Uh, TF2 Soldier involved a lot of air shots, where there's no blue plates in that, obviously. But um, you know, it's something good to keep into mind. But yeah, you can do self damage, make yourself go faster, and all that kind of stuff. In the end, you, you have to you have to play it to learn. Uh, so like things like Juggernaut or Brute, I highly recommend as classes you should uh, lean more towards when you're starting out the game and learning the mechanics. Because you want to kill people, right? Come on. So I think that's basically it. I don't have anything else really to tell you. By the way, that's what the alt key does. You use that, don't use that on their base, like when, when you see someone on their flag or something, like in their base. Like obviously there's people at their base, we know this. But point them out when they're inside your base, especially when the radar d is down. Actually, I did not explain the radar at all. Uh, do we have one in this map? I, well, I guess we'll see. I th think we do. Uh, no, we don't. We need to try going to the other side. Okay, um, so the radar, in a nutshell, is... Um, what, what that does is, if you take that down, uh, what, what normally I would see... Uh, you can't see that, but I would see, even though I don't actually have direct line of sight, I could see uh, these chevrons kind of thing. Uh, th this one, I kind of only, I don't know why I see it now. But you'd be able to see it even though you don't have a line of sight. However, when your generator's down, or the, 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 uh, the what's it called? Um, uh, whenever your generator's down, or whatever, or the, the, the turret got, the sensor got destroyed, it would actually normally be here. Uh, if that's the case, then you won't be able to get that that sight. So then people will have to depend upon spotting. Uh, and also, please do remember if you play CTF, uh, the generator is not the most important thing in the world. It helps, but if the team is putting an enormous amount of resources into defending it, you get more points winning. And and I mean this as in you actually get more points, even if uh, uh, even if you're the worst player on your team, you'll get more points than the best player uh, on the other team, on the losing team. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the case because you get like a bonus right away and other, some other crap like on top of it. Uh, if I'm wrong, then then sue me. I'm sorry, but yeah. So uh, that does it for the little tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two, and I hope you give it a try. Uh, you can add me, and you can actually you can actually follow me anytime you want. You just go into your list, and you go into social. Uh, you go add a uh, where's add a friend. Uh, I can add a friend. And you add Mike Lat. You just type my name in, and you can see whenever I'm online or offline. And you can join me anytime you want, and uh, anytime you see me online. And I don't have to—I don't have to approve of you. So you know, you can—I can have a like 90 people following me, and the, and it's not like some Steam friends limit that has like 300. So uh, if you see—if you keep catch me streaming, I'll kick your ass if you start targeting me. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, some other things that I will explain since I'd kill myself if I didn't explain it. Uh, first of all, if you have like a generator or something and you have a, bit, a bunch of credits, you can upgrade it by going up to and pressing the G. It will increase like damage on the turrets or range on the sensors or armor on the generator. Uh, it requires a certain amount. There's no there's no example I can give you. And also here, I can also get the uh, Shrike, which I want to show you. I don't even know where it is. Oh, here I am. So Shrike is basically this. You fire. You shouldn't really go and use vehicles at the very beginning if you're very new to this game. Uh, it's really, honestly, not that necessary, so I could go run people- Oh no, I tried to run over a vehicle. But yeah, you can get some Shrike practice in if you really want. It's really weird controls, so just keep that in mind. It's- I, I don't think this- this is not a vehicle-heavy game. Um, I, I can't apparently run people over to show you how that works. There we go. Alright, let's just hop out of that. Oh, you get a little bit of a thing for that. Also, uh, something important to note, if I dam- well, I can't dam- apparently the vehicles can't be damaged, but if they could, you could repair them with this tool. Uh, but I don't really need to do that. Um, and let's go get, uh, just to show you, you can- so the Shrike, you can't have anyone drive with you. The Beowulf, however, 
uh, you can, it is a co-op vehicle, so you can have like, uh, you can have another player in your gunner seat, so you can see how this thing recharges. I get no other abilities other than to drive and to kind of do this. This thing has a kind of a fall off. And if I, if I switch to the second seat, I get this turret thing. Which is kind of cool. And does this one damage either? Nope. Okay. Yeah, apparently all my vehicles are invincible on this map. And the last one is a grab cycle, not particularly useful. It you can go fast. You can also you can also ferry uh uh, uh what's we call it uh, a flight carrier. You can run people over. Uh, it's kind of like a, a mini ground trike, but you know it's not particularly useful. Not all the time. You know it's useful sometimes. Maybe you're just having fun with a friend. You know kind of thing. So it's not maybe that bad, but yeah. Uh, I think that's. I think I've covered it all. If I haven't covered something, I apologize. Oh yes, uh, there's one last thing. Sorry. You see these blue things? Um, these. You see my energy? Like I'm gonna just deplete my energy on purpose. Okay. So we go down. So, I, I have a slight problem. I have no energy, but I want to get up to my base. This requires. If I, as long as I'm in the blue, requires no energy. My energy actually recharges, so I can easily get back up here, which is actually kind of nice. So just keep those blue things in mind if you want to get back up to your base. But they're usually less convenient, like they're at the outside of your base or something. Uh, some places have it, like in other different areas, like... Uh, well, this is not... That was actually the only one on this map, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, sometimes, like, lifts like this will have it. This one does not, so I have to use my jetpack to get back up here. Uh, and that's it. So that's all I have, and uh, I will see you in-game. Bye.